Thank you. Y'all welcome. This is Ms. Josie McDaniel Burkett. who will be signing calls. Welcome. We're glad to have you here. It's good to see you. Uh, we appreciate y'all coming out on this beautiful Sunday afternoon. As you know, uh, out in the ocean is quite a hurricane. Last uh, we know is it's up at about 185 miles an hour. We do not know when it will arrive here or what strength it will have when it arrives here, but we are preparing. This is our fifth year in a row that we've done this. And so we are, Team South Carolina is, is uh, highly activated again. We've already begun, begun the movement of people and material to, and equipment to the places where it needs to be. And whatever happens, we'll be ready and we will certainly uh, in, keep you informed of what is, what is happening. Hurricane Dorian, as I said, is now Category 5. That's 185 miles an hour. <clears throat> I issued a state of emergency declaration yesterday. That state of emergency declaration allows state and local emergency management officials to begin staging resources and assets along the coast in preparation of the hurricane. Also, I spoke with President Trump by video conference to, today, just a few minutes ago, along with other governors and his entire team about the preparations in South Carolina. And of course, he offered all any and all federal assistance that we may need. I've asked the president for a federal emergency declaration that will allow for direct federal resources to be accessed by Team South Carolina to assist in hurricane preparation efforts. We expect that declaration to be granted very soon. We've already made the declaration, which allows our agencies to be reimbursed with federal funds. We did that earlier during the week. <clears throat> the state law enforcement National Guard and the first responders have been fully mobilized. South Carolina Department of Transportation has increased the number of their motorist assistant trucks on I-95 and I-26. All the South Carolina welcome centers and rest areas are open and staffed 24 hours a day. DHEC has alerted all private dam owners to prepare for notification to lower water levels in advance of significant amounts of rainfall. Department of Social Services is preparing to open their shelters across the state if and as needed. And of course, as always, we will continue to monitor the storm. Again, we've monitored 24 hours a day, not only from this place, but around the state. 24 hours a day we're monitoring the storm and we'll make further announcements as the time comes to make those announcements. Do you have any questions? Governor, when you said uh, resources have been activated and mobilized, well, can you elaborate on that? Is that National Guard troops move into staging areas across it the coast? It is indeed. General McCarty, please. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Uh, yes, the, uh, the National Guard, based upon the governor's executive order, has been mobilized. We have approximately a thousand soldiers and airmen now that are being uh, brought up. They will initially report to their units and then we will move them on to their staging areas to be in a position to support uh, directions given by the governor in response to the storm. Also, Director Christy Hall. Thank you, Governor. Yes, ma'am. So we have uh, 2,000 of our uh, employees uh, ready for. Uh, in prepare, preparing for uh, what may be coming our way. Uh, as the governor mentioned, we have increased our presence along our uh, vital routes in the state to make sure that we're able to keep traffic flowing. And at this point in time, all traffic is moving well around and through the state. Director Leroy Smith, please. Thank you, Governor. Uh, Department of Public Safety, uh, coordinating ESF 16, we have 2,000 785 law enforcement and uh, National Guard personnel assigned to uh, ESL 16 for uh, traffic management uh, uh, efforts. Uh, with regard to I-95, we have uh, increased our staffing on the I-95 corridor from the Georgia state line to the North Carolina state line to keep the traffic flowing. So far, uh, things are operating very uh, smoothly. Thank you. Thank you very much. And there is more, but let's have John Quirello to give us the weather report. Thank you, Governor. Good afternoon. As the uh, Governor had mentioned, Dorian is currently a Category 5 hurricane with wind speeds of 185 miles per hour um, over the northwestern Bahamas. And in fact, it makes it the strongest hurricane in modern records for the northwestern Bahamas. Uh, Dorian is expected to slowly near the east coast of Florida Monday night into Tuesday before starting to turn northward and increase in forward speed. The latest uh, forecast from the National Hurricane Center 
indicates that Dorian will track just off the South Carolina coast late Wednesday and Thursday, likely still as a powerful hurricane. It's important to remember that this track can change over the next couple of days, and only a small change in the track will have large implications on the potential impacts here in South Carolina. So at this point, everyone should be preparing now for potentially significant impacts along the coast Wednesday and Thursday. Thank you. Thank you. And with that, Director Kim Stimson, would you give us an oval view, please? Yes, sir. Glad to. Um, the State Emergency Operations Center right now is at OPCON 1. That's Operating Condition 1, which is our full readiness level. Uh, and that's for us to be able to coordinate any state response we might have to do in the, in the near term. Uh, our current uh, priorities are evacuation planning and, and possible sheltering, and then uh, follow on with uh, any initial response and, uh, and damage assessment. Uh, we stay in contact with the uh, local uh, emergency managers in all the counties, especially the coastal counties. Uh, they're doing pretty much the same thing that we're doing, is taking a look at potential uh, planning uh, scenarios. Uh, in terms of logistics, um, we have uh, got a number of logistics contracts that we have on standby if, if we need them. Uh, we've got a pretty fully stocked warehouse up in Winsboro uh, with uh, over 500 uh, uh, pallets of uh, M uh, food, MREs, uh, meals ready to eat, uh, and over 750 pallets of, of water, as well as uh, 150 uh, uh, thousand sandbags and uh, almost 10,000 tarps, those blue tarps for temporary repair if we need them, so they're available. The only other thing I wanted, two other things really I wanted to mention. One, it's uh, very important for all of us as citizens here in South Carolina to be our own emergency manager. Uh, take a look at the threats that you might be affected by, uh, make the appropriate plans, and we've got some tools for you to use uh, to help you with that. We've got our website at scemd.org. Uh, which has lots of information, not just for hurricanes, but any, any other disaster we might have. And then uh, last year we fielded a, uh, a new tool for your smartphone or your cell phone, and that's the South Carolina Emergency Manager app, which basically has everything on the, uh, uh, on the website and helps you develop your own plan, have your own checklist. You can actually put in important information in there and carry that around with, uh, with you and, uh, as we move forward uh, uh, mobily these days. And then the last item I want to mention is, is this is st uh, strictly not just a coastal event uh, with a hurricane potentially affecting South Carolina, uh, but certainly could see inland uh, issues with uh, winds and possibly uh, you know flooding as we move through the process. So again, it's not strictly a coastal event that could very well uh, strike far inland. Thank you, sir. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Are there any questions? Governor, uh, is there any concerns with flooding near the Columbia Canal? Well, as Director Stenson just said, there's always a, a, a possibility of those things happening. We don't know what's going to happen. We don't know how strong the storm or hurricane could be when it, when it gets here, if it gets here. We don't know if it's going to be on land or out in the ocean. It's just too early to predict those things. But as you know, last time with Hurricane Florence, we had a lot of flooding that we had never seen before, not many, many years at, at, at the very least. So we're preparing for the worst, we're hoping for the best, but the message is to be prepared because we know it's coming. It's going to affect everybody in the state to some degree, so be prepared. Any idea what the timing would be in terms of uh, potential evacuations or no, getting that north and south? It's too early for all of those considerations. Uh, we, we're monitoring around the clock, have good information coming in, but the, it's uh, always subject to change. What's your message to the people at home today who are be concerned? Be prepared. This is a hurricane. As the president said, we, we've not seen such power in a hurricane, 185 miles an hour. That's a category five and going towards whatever the top of that is. We don't have a, a solid prediction as to where it might turn, where it might not turn, when it will get here. But we assure you we have the, the best minds and the most experienced and talented people around the clock working on it to be able to tell the people of South Carolina, and we're in communication with the, with the other governor's offices uh, on, on, the, on the coast, that's been constant as well. So w when we get the information, we will lay it out and do so in a fashion that's uh, clear and easy to understand. But always, you must be prepared. We live on the coast, so we have hurricanes. This is one more. Thank you very much.